Welcome back. Continuing with our everything whiting, today we're going into uh, hen hackle, and frequently called soft hackles, but it's hen. And we're gonna go through kind of just the basics, what you use it for. Things have changed over the last 40 years. A lot of the stuff we used to use this stuff for, we don't use it anymore. Uh, particularly wing sets on dry flies, which is pretty much extinct now. I went through the whole shop, we don't have one. We don't have a single traditional Adams. And I was trying to figure, I didn't, I thought about it late and didn't, didn't have time to tie one. And I remember this old preen fly box that I have. And I found, these are, I found this thing in a vest. This has got to be in the 60s sometime, late 60s, uh, probably late 60s. And it was flies that I bought in a uh, pharmacy, but actually that was a fly shop back in the day. They were either pharmacies or, or barber shops. There weren't really that many fly shops. And so what I want to show you is that the original, like what you saw these sets done with, especially with your grizzlies, with this neck right here, we would use the shorter feathers up here to make wing sets, right? So, and that's what I was over looking for on a traditional Adams. And traditional meaning not a parachute, right? Just a traditional set where you wound the hackle around the hook. And so I, I couldn't find it. I found it in this box. Like I said, these flies have been sitting in there. It was my first fly box, right? And I don't know what year these flies were, but you can see it's got a traditional set with two wings here, one on top, you know, right on top, both of them. And it's, a, it's an original Adams. And so that and that's where I'm from. Well, that's the Adams was uh, where I'm from in Traverse City is the birthplace of the Adams on the Boardman River. So and I have no idea who tied these flies, but I, I'm pretty sure they were a long time ago. And this one over here is a I can't even tell. I think it might have been a quill body at one time. But you can see there's a couple light done hackles wing tips up here. And then it gets really interesting because and I I have done these wing sets for all my life and I've tied in particular one of these that I've never seen anybody else tie and I obviously got the idea from wherever I got these flies but and I want you to see something here because this is kind of the OG parachute and there's no there's no you know wing sticking up if you look right here what you'll see and this is kind of a spent wing and I mean the tails are rotted off of this thing and it's just it's just I can't believe it's still holding together but these are two stems that we wrap the hackle around. That's how I was taught to do a parachute. And so they're, they're wrapped up. You can see it's a, a spent wing. Your wings are sideways to the hook. And you come over here, it's kind of the same thing. This one is just, man, I don't know. That could be one I tied when I was like seven, eight years old. I have no idea. I don't, I don't recall it, but you can see the wings here. But this one in particular up here, this is the one that I tied an absolute ton of this fly. And it's a, kind of an atom, except for it's got a pheasant uh, crest tail, and it's got a delta wing parachute. And I, I just I, I just can't believe I still have these things. Like I said, it's gotta be 60s or 70s version, sitting in a box, and I know I fished the hell out of them. But you can see that the wings are, they're tips, they're, they're, they're feathers off of a neck. You can see it tied in like this. This is your traditional over here, and you just kind of keep going, and it's you're phasing in. But the delta wings, and I still do a ton of this fly. I personally think they eat this thing a lot for little crane flies, but it's just it's just something kind of cool. Like you know, you know, it's pretty rare to still have something from that that you actually use. It's not like these were sitting. They were how I found them in an old vest that my it was my dad's vest, but it was my box. And, of flies, so it's pretty cool. So moving right along on that, so we don't use the traditional wing sets where we set them like this very often. But the reason to use these was that you would, they're a little bit wider, the hackle's a little wider, and it's not, it's very opaque. It's, it's not as, it's not as translucent that you can see through it. So it makes a, when you would stand them up like this, it would make a nice little set of wings, just, you know, mayfly wings aren't that big. And, and so it was a, it was just a traditional set. But you also did wing sets kind of like that delta when they're back on your wet flies. You would often set them back over top of the wing, so, you know, for your just your traditional wet flies, and in place of a quill a quill wing. And so you'd have these uh, setting back there, 
And so, but that kind of that kind of lost its way. We don't you don't see a lot of traditional wet fly anglers in the U.S. There's still a ton of European anglers still fish them a lot. And we had a little bit of surge with Sylvester Neems when he was doing his uh, uh, soft tackle stuff, and you know it was here and there. But uh, then we had a second renaissance when you started getting the trout spay guys. And when the when those cats showed up, it was kind of all over again. And we're starting to see the bigger kind of half half steelhead inversions and and traditional wets. And suddenly it's all it's back. You know, there's a lot of people doing them in there. And I, and I really encourage you, if you've never swung a wet fly and, you know, you've, the world's kind of went, it went, you know, dry fly specific, then streamer thing specific, and now Euro nymphing. And there's still this, this really fun way to fish. It's just a swing, just a, you know, just a traditional swing, just down and across. And it's really, really effective for just, clo you know, just searching water. So... So I want to go over the feather a little bit of what makes it different. First and foremost, it is hen hackle. It is not rooster hackle, right? And so what you're going to see when you look at these feathers, and I just grabbed one off of this dun neck, and what you're going to see is down the rachis, which is the, the stem of the fly, the feather, excuse me, right down the center. The rachis is the stem, and you'll see there's a little bit of, uh, it's sem it's semi opaque. It's kind of when I bend these things, it's a little bit solid, and it's often referred to as webby when you talk about soft tackles and when you talk about uh, hen hackle. They'll talk about it being webby, and that, that kind of is a little bit like schlop. And if you're familiar with that, it just means that you don't see through it like you do, like regular uh, dry fly hackle. And I but I want to encourage you when you look at these. We'll go through the colors and what is up here in a minute. But we've come to a place in the road with dry fly hackle where it, everything is so perfect. And when you look at hackle, regardless of, you, know, you hardly ever see a traditionally tied where it's wrapped around the hook like this. You'll see a lot of parachutes. And you'll see, I mean, they're, they're absolutely stunning to see how some people can wrap it. And they'll wrap them, hell, they'll have... 20 turns, which is absolutely ridiculous, right? You're trying to emulate six legs on a mayfly. And, that, and the, the hackle is supposed to catch in the meniscus in the film, and the, and the displacement of the feather is actually what keeps the fly up. And I, I talk about this when I do hackle flies a lot, because personally, I don't like that look. I don't like the really hard edge, just really consistent, and I mean, I like the look of it as a fly tied, but from a fishing perspective, I, I don't do flies like that. You often hear me say I do my hackle one size over always, and I frequently will take uh, on my own, I'll run either a soft hackle style, and, but generally I use, when I want to see one that just really, to me, sings, I'm going to put a little partridge in it. And it's a soft hackle, right? That is as soft as soft hackle gets. And all I'm looking for is a little randomness, I, and it, it's speckled. And so I really think it's a really, it's a better look than it, this total black, you know, when you circle the hook like this, and it's just, all you can see is hackle. It's, it's good for our eye to see a beautifully tied fly. But from a fishing perspective, I frequently put that into my flies to make it look a little bit more random, you know, and more like segments in the legs. And another, and I got to tell you, when you take a hen hackle and do that, when I was talking about this being a little bit opaque in the middle here, and so and when you look at this hackle, it'll have, it's kind of like the middle of it will be a little webbier. This is really good dry fly hackle. This is really, it's got almost identical barbular count as the old days. It gives you a little bit of that opaqueness to the feather in the middle where it's a little bit it builds bulk, if you will. It looks, it gives you an illusion of bulk. And then the tips are still very shiny, kind of like a, you know, like a regular dry fly hackle. So all, all I'm saying is it's a, it's a multiple use. It is not just a wet fly hackle. This stuff is just like all the other hackle as we genetically engineer it as Tom does. It gets better longer and it's just a little bit, it's just getting a little closer to dry fly. And, and it really always was. You, you know, in the old days, there wasn't this super great dry fly hack, and we got away with it very well. So it's just, it, it's something to consider. But back to the wet fly aspect of this. 
And so when you say it's a little webby, and it's going to, and so what you're going to do is, is you wrap this hack over your traditional wets. It's going to, the idea is that it's going to move a little bit. If it's too stiff, it doesn't do that. So this hackle's a little bit soft, so it's going to undulate just a little bit. Then when you consider that that middle is going to have a little bit more build, because it's, because it's, it's not a build, it's just the color's a little more intense. It's a little thicker in the middle. And what that does in a lot of these things is you wrap that fly, it gives you that undulation like this, and it gives you a little bulk. When you get that little bit of bulk in a wet fly, it could be legs, it could be a wing silhouette, you know, of a sunk fly, it could be an emergent fly. And so then you're going to see a lot of people running these things in the brighter color, in the lighter colors, not necessarily brighter, but like in your lighter duns. And you're trying to catch a little reflection in the water. And so it's, it's just, that's what this hackle is for. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at this hackle, it's all pretty much the same. When you're looking at the whiting, what you're going to see, and, and I'll go through the whiting first, the whiting has 12 colors, basically. You have a handful of dyed colors. You've got your regular grizzly, and then your, you know, your light tans or light duns, your browns, and your, your furnace more styles down in here. And so and then you get in your dyed colors. And so you've got, and I particularly really like the dyed colors. I, I, I talk about that with my dry fly hackle too. I, I really like dyed colors, especially when you get into the, the kind of lighter olives and the lighter uh the brown grizzlies and then you've got your variants in here which is my absolute favorite this this feather is just such a cool wrapped or, or put as a wing set i mean just absolutely cool and so even though i like the dyed colors for a lot of my fishing stuff uh I, when i'm when i'm looking for a real fly i just i tend towards the natural colors and so segueing into natural colors. So we went out of the, the 12 basic colors of your whiting. Mm -hmm. And again, the hackle is all pretty much the same. It's not, it's not quality graded because it's so consistent. And then you get into the whiting, or I mean, excuse me, the Hebert. And the Hebert has no dyed colors. With Hebert, you're going to start with your grizzlies and you're going to go right down through into your uh, green wells and you know, through your tans, or your, or your duns, I mean. And this is what I, in particular, I tend to, in my wet flies, I tend to stay in these light duns, like these colors here. Uh, just, I like that reflective value you get out of that when you're doing a wet fly. And, you know, it, it doesn't actually have that. It just attracts, to me, it attracts the fish's attention a little bit. And again, it could be, could be the leg, could be the wing, could be an emergent fly. It's just giving you that translucency, that lighter, you know, you get the same thing out of CDC. It just holds bubble, air bubbles on it, and it looks cool, right? And it's very fishy. But on, when you go out of the whiting, like I said, you come into the Hebert. Hebert has 14 colors in this. Uh, we carry all of them, and, and, and some of the colors are like they call on hand. You can't always find the colors, but for the most part, in the in the in the ones you use the most the green wells sometimes can be a little bit that's these here these can be a little bit tricky to get not they've been pretty good but overall you're going to have just a couple more colors in the hebert they're going to all be natural colors there's no dye and they're they're going to be and that's the hallmark of the hebert line these absolutely super rich colors when you get into the duns this particular this is a rusty dun right here there's a very good chance this doesn't make it back to the wall because I'm absolutely in love with this neck. And I will use this stuff for dry flies, you know, quite frequently. So especially on those rusty dunts. So anyway, you, you've, got a, you've got a feather that traditionally was used for setting wingtips for hackles, which we don't do very often anymore. I'd encourage you to do some of those delta wings that I showed a second ago. Uh, but predominantly, this is for soft tackle flies. Idea is that you're going to wrap it. It's going to be a little thicker, a little webbier. It's going to move and undulate just a little bit more. And you're going to be basically in your natural colors. And that's pretty much it. But don't, like I said, don't be afraid to try this. And, and on your any type of set, I don't care if it's a traditional wrap tackle or if you're a parachute, drop a little, just two turns of this in there. You'll be amazed how much buggier it looks on your fly. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.